What would you sacrifice for beauty? It's a question explored in the body horror film The Substance, a film that stars Demi Moore and Margaret Qualley, and recently won the Midnight Madness Award at TIFF. Here with his take is Metro Morning's film columnist, Jason Gorber. Good morning, David. How are you? I'm, you, you sound like uh, you're still in the wake-up stage of the morning. I, uh, the tiff was rough, man. <laughs> there was too many films. Yeah. I am super excited that audiences are getting a chance to see the substance. I would love if this was one of those films that people just go in and just trust me, just go watch this film. What? So I saw it way back, way back machine. So this play can. Yeah. Um, and then, but her debut, uh, this is her second film basically um the last film she did was revenge and that actually premiered at midnight madness prepared at tiff premiered at tiff and it's one of these great examples of these really ambitious and exciting filmmakers that um, we've talked about this before that are working broadly with what we call genre so <laughs> you're looking at horror or action or revenge or whatever the stuff the sort of general sort of cliche you know we use words like trope um but they're doing really interesting things with a film because what you can do is if you have a hook, if you have something like this, like, oh, look, it's a body horror film, you can do really clever stuff because you already have a way of, quote, unquote, selling the film, of getting audiences interested in it, but actually go in an interesting way. And this is one of those films. You get a couple of really great actors. You say some pretty interesting, not groundbreaking, but interesting things about the whole notion of how aging um, causes uh, consternation for people who make their living off of their beauty. And then things go dark really, really quickly. Can you give us more about how dark or will we ruin if we do? <laughs> I mean, it was one of those things. It goes really dark, but let's let's put it let's put it this way. Demi Moore um, wants to um, stay young, so she takes this drug, and she turns into a she's she's a jazzer size star, which is amazing. It's like has all the eighty shtick, and she takes this drug and basically turns into a younger, totter, um, quote unquote, hotter version of um, of herself, which is Margaret Qualley, and then it turns into something that mixes everything from. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Cronenberg's The Fly. And Cronenberg's a key to this because a couple things. One, David Cronenberg is another one of these guys that deals with stuff with horror, with some of the shocking elements, but does so in a way which is also unapologetically cerebral, right? There's a literary quality to it. Guillermo del Toro to a certain extent as well. These people that sort of play in these greater playgrounds. But as I've been saying since France, between Titan that won the Palme d'Or a couple years ago, which is sort of very much in the spirit of Cronenberg's crash, and this that is Dead Ringers, that is um, The Fly that has so many Cronenbergian elements, I love that Women in France are being raised to channel their inner Cronenberg. I love that the entire industry is set up, that they um, are embracing this. Because there's for so long, we've sort of segmented about who makes what kind of films. And these filmmakers are absolutely taking things that for decades were the idiom of just male directors. Mm -hmm. And are absolutely putting their own spin on it, putting their own um, effect in it, um, and, and just elevating this stuff to ways that I think is quite extraordinary. It's an incredibly entertaining film. It's very dark. Um, but f even for those who are like, oh, I hate horror films, this is not just like a run-of-the-mill thing where a bunch of nonsense happens and uh, you don't really care about the characters. This is a deeply involved character movement taking these heightened uh, experiences and bringing them to a new level. This is absolutely one of the best films of the year. I feel like I have not seen Demi Moore recently. Absolutely. So she is, you know, she's one of those actors that Hollywood, you know, for lots of reasons, she was raising her kids, whatever, but they didn't, they didn't keep using her as it were. Mm -hmm. And part of that is comes in this film. This is one of those great roles where they're bringing this baggage, this baggage of stardom into it. And that absolutely plays into a role, but she's so fantastic in this. I mean, the pun I was using is that we little, since we're getting partial versions of, of her, literally it's, we have Demi Demi Moore's, um, but it all, it all comes to play here. And Marika Qualley, 
it joins uh, uh, again. We have mentioned this before. If you go back to Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and look at all the people that played the Manson family, oh yeah, all of those actors are now in some of the most amazing stuff. You have people like um, you know starring in Honora, which won the Palme d'Or and uh, runners up for People's Choice. This, um, you know, Elvis, like all of these guys, these this generation of actors are now in these films and are getting attention. It is. It is this wild sort of family tree of the Manson family in a Tarantino film that are sort of really the forefront of a new generation of performance, and it's really tremendous. It is kind of bonkers that they were all cast in that one thing and have all gone on. Yeah, it is wild. Okay, look, let's um, step aside from um, that for a moment and talk about Wolves, which is uh, this other movie that's out. Big names in it. uh, George Clooney, Brad Pitt. You're already, like... Sh- collapsing into yourself, which tells me you're you're not in love with it. <laughs> you're reading body language, which is just exhaustion. The deal is that Wolf's is really interesting because it uh, premiered at Venice. It did not play Toronto. It pl- premiered at Venice because guess what? George Clooney and Brad Pitt look really good in tuxedos on the Lido. Like, this is perfect. It's an Apple movie. Apple has distribution stuff with Sony. We're getting in the weeds here. But basically, seeing this film, this feels like a perfectly fine streaming film. And what's wild about it is that it's a perfectly good streaming film two of the biggest actors of all time in it. So it's fine. It plays that both of them play, you know, fixtures, Harvey Keitel in Reservoir Dogs kind of thing, a guy who's got to clean up all the nonsense after a bunch of violence has taken place. They're lone wolves. And then they get together. And now instead of being lone wolves, they're wolves. They're together. They're conjoined on their thing as they're trying to clean up a mess that Amy Ryan, among other people, have actually put together. The film is at best good, but weirdly, it feels like the scope of it. It doesn't really feel like a big movie. It feels like something you would watch on a plane or on your laptop. And that's weird with Brad Pitt and uh, um, and George Clooney. That other guy. I love that it's getting a theatrical release. I love that it is. But honestly, it feels like it is it is designed just to work in a smaller scope. And that's unfortunate for me. It is the new normal for films of this budget to be made at all. And one of the things that Clooney was talking about at Venice was they don't know where this stuff is going. They're all trying to figure this out. And so mm-hmm. if you're going to make a film like this that isn't a blockbuster, that isn't this tiny little genre film, but still has some production value, this is what we're going to get. So if you love these guys, go support in theaters. Otherwise, you'll have a chance to see it on streaming in a not-too-distant future. Jason Gorber, thank you. Thanks, David. Jason Gorber is Metro Mornings film columnist, still recovering from TIFF. He's also the editor-in-chief of ThatShelf.com. Big change.